Peace, peace, peace. Welcome to the Scrap and Roll Podcast. I'm your host, Sky. You already know. Damien, Jace, CJ, we are back after the first pay-per-view of the year. UFC 283 is a wrap. And we have and new champions going down. First thing that we have to address is Jace has been on here talking reckless. Reckless. Undefeated. I can't get it wrong. I mean, he thought you would have thought he was Conor McGregor the way that he predicted these things. <laughs> <laughs> Your boy was going crazy over there. And yet, he got two L's. He got plenty of L's. <laughs> but specifically on the main events, which was the ones that we did, he said Glover, Glover lost. He said Figueredo, which none of us, we told him that Brandon Moreno was going to do that thing. Is there anything you'd like to say, Jace? Um, here, here, here's the reason why that that happened. See, what happened was, because <laughs> right, I get high before we do this podcast, okay? And, and for the first crack. time, that's what he be doing. <laughs> and for the first time, for the first time in my life, and I'm gonna let everyone know out there, listen, okay? Whatever you do, do not, I repeat, do not drink the bong water, you poured it out. Cause I drunk the bong water and I got some wrong, so that I'm sorry. Don't don't drink bong water and place bets. That's what you're saying. <laughs> uh, how do those ales taste? <laughs> I mean, to be fair, it tastes a little bit better than the bukkake from last night. But hey, fair. Yo, oh man, <laughs> oh my god. <laughs> He's a wild boy. Come on, uh, come on. The black strickling uh, right here, bro. <laughs> I'm telling you, you never know what you're gonna get. Uh, yeah. Man. Um. So you know, we can quickly just look over at the UFC 283 card, um, and we can give it a rating. I think last time we we were going through and giving it a rating, uh, mm. we can start with uh, you, Damien. Like, how would you rate this card? I'm gonna give this card a B plus. I'm going to give it a okay. B plus only because it was a card that was starting off the year, right? It had fights that you didn't want to miss from the early prelims, right? You made sure you saw the early prelims. <laughs> you saw Terrence McKinney fight. <laughs> oh, my God. You know what I mean? And Has he woke up yet? <laughs> Has he woke up yet? <laughs> oh, oh, my God. A boy like that. Oh hey, my God. I, I was thinking in my head while I was watching this fight, please close your mouth. Please close your mouth. It was open the whole time. I'm like, come on. And he was looking kind of nervous in there. Did you guys realize that? Yeah. Like, he was on the back step looking kind of nervous. I'm like, what's up, bro? Like, you've been doing your shit. I think it's because when you get knocked out one time, that starts replaying in your head. And you're like, I don't want that shit again. I don't want to lose like that again. And then that just... And that's why I respect confident fucking fighters, right? Even if they're losing, they're still confident in themselves because... Maybe for that reason, they don't want to have th that little bit of doubt in the back of their mind that's stopping them from progressing. But damn, Terrence McKinney, my boy. Oh, that's all I could say all night. Was I was upset. I was even watching other fights, thinking about this fight. Like, damn, <laughs> bro, why you gotta go out like that? So, so what you're really saying, Damian, based on your your argument, is that Terrence McKinney might want to look at retiring because. <laughs> oh no, no. Nah. Like it happens. I hope he learns from this, and I I hope he grows and he starts having a little bit of confidence. Although, like that's gonna be hard now with that one. That's a because that's like a lifetime highlight for this. <laughs> <laughs> hey. like, we're gonna see that highlight a few times. You know what I mean? And shout out to the Bomb Fiend brothers. <laughs> you know, because this was they so they made their debut on the Contender Series once again. Another reason why you should watch the Contender Series. They both um. <laughs> Competed on the same night, and then they both had their debuts this year um, on the same on the same car, and both of them won. You know, so you know, Bonfim now is in there for knockout of the year contender, and then his brother Gabriel with that beautiful the way he jumped that guillotine and mounted guilt. Listen, it now this is the one time you guys are gonna hear me say something nice about Alexander Volkanovsky. Alex, Alex would have never tapped to that. He was kicking them little, that, you know, because that's the same mounted guillotine that um, uh, Ortega had him in. He was kicking them little legs. He did not give up. Uh, Lazine. Like the little legs. <laughs> you know his legs like this big. <laughs> he was, Lazine didn't even, 
even try to kick. Like he wasn't even. He was just like, all right, yeah, bro, you got me. You got me. Yeah. Damn. I I wonder though, like how tight it was because you know, yeah, you know Brian Ortega got a tight motherfucking guillotine. So I want to know like how tight that one felt. Pause. Oh, pause. <laughs> <laughs> of brian ortega i know like a couple pods ago y'all was like going crazy y'all know that uh tracy cortez is now single mm -hmm. i already yeah. slid into her dms <laughs> i've been seeing stuff all over the place uh i didn't I realize it <laughs> wait i saw a, a tweet i think it was a tweet that brian ortega put he said fighter remove tracy Or <laughs> <laughs> tracy cortez i was like that's nice making a little joke out of it because yeah. you know everybody's talking about it yeah yeah um yeah that's just something to throw inside there but um yeah so shout out to the bonfine brothers i'm excited to see them uh see what they're gonna do what kind of splash they're gonna make obviously oh mckinney man yeah <laughs> <laughs> oh swear, my god when, when terrence and we are not laughing at terrence because you know we're gonna put some respect on these fighters names here right but when he got ko'd i called jason i was like damn that's why this is happening on the early prelims because like we can't see that no <laughs> oh we we were doing we were doing we were doing the um fight cast live with us guy no, not yet. I was setting up for it because that was yes, the early. That was the oh, early. Okay. Yeah. Uh, yeah, it was early prelims. Okay. Yeah. This nigga was fucking the ground, just booty air. Oh my <laughs> god. <laughs> And that was with no mouthpiece, and his mouthpiece went flying. Or I mean, so I feel like he kept spitting tactic. out his mouthpiece, man. That that's what I it felt like run. to me. Some people do, I think. What you think? You think so? Yeah. Just like yeah. some people be like throwing their cup in front of the knee. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I feel like some of them be like, "Come on, dog! You know you wide open for a, a, a fucking nut check. You a little too comfortable with that in the middle of a fight. You know what I mean? Like, just protect yourself at all times. But you're gonna leave your your <laughs> your nuts hanging there like that. <laughs> That's because you want a breather. Oh, speaking of nuts, Nunez. Josiana Nunez is a fucking dog. The way that she came back in that fight and was just scrappy as hell, fighting a chick who was way taller than her and was just like, would not give up, did not give up. Um, that that was absolutely insane. And fair, she should be ashamed. Like, okay, I know we said we're gonna put some respect, but like at the same time, yeah. no. how you that tall got all that length, you not utilizing none of it. Like she, that was that was disappointing. She kicked. Well, herself, I think for sure. I think it was like maybe she was just mystified by Nunez, wondering like where the fuck her neck was because her <laughs> head was just sitting on top of her shoulders <laughs> and there was no neck, right? Oh, so she God. knew she like okay, like I can't do a rear naked choke at all. It's impossible. <laughs> no neck, no tap. Like that's what she saw. No neck, no tap. Oh my god. I was, yeah. <laughs> I'm I was thinking the same exact thing. It was like David versus Goliath in there. It looked like I'm like, how is she so little like that? And I was watching it with my fiance and I was like, Where's her neck at? Like, is it just me or she got no neck? And you're right, that's how she how how you going how the chain gonna touch the shoulder she <laughs> <laughs> Okay, no no no. Here's a serious question, and I mean this sincerely. How did she fold a towel? <laughs> I don't like you. I don't like you. Do, do y'all know who Big Ed is? Do y'all know who Big Ed is on um, 90 Day Fiance? Yeah, he's from San Diego. Too. Yeah, he's from San Diego. He ain't got no... Have you ever seen him, Jace? Have you ever seen him, Jace? Yeah. Oh, okay, so you know what I'm talking yes, about. Yes, I man. have. That's the definition 100%. of no neck. But I mean, as far as fair and like, she could have beat her this whole fight with just jabs. She could have just beat her with the jab. Because her, she, as soon as she jabbed, it was, she was already right there. Like, every time she would pop her and like, every time she would pop 
I don't I don't know what happened. You know what I think it was? I think it was the fact that she was thirty nine, which is that's pretty up there. Especially yeah. for the women. I think I'm a single woman that was like at that age. Besides like um oh, I can't even think of her name right now. Who just re Holly just, Home? No, no, who just fought? Uh, uh D's. No, no, she fought the same night. She was of what? Like, the second oh, Lauren, Murphy? Lauren Murphy. Yeah, Lauren Murphy, yeah. How old is she? Do you know? 39. Yeah, okay, yes. Okay, so I was right. But like she's up there in age, so I think what happened was the the I don't remember I don't know if you guys remember this, but the fight started off pretty quick. They were actually getting into it like right from the get go. And mm -hmm. I think I think it just caught up with her being the bigger, she's probably heavier. I don't think she could hang anymore. I think she got a little bit tired after that first round. And then the old girl was taking her best shots and still pushing forward. And she was still marching her down. And I think that's, I, I think not only did she get physically exhausted, she was mentally exhausted as well. Yeah. Her, her hands I, were. I 100% <laughs> I, I agree. Because I know I'm always in my feelings when a girl takes my best shots. <laughs> <laughs> uh, so, Jace, what would you rate the card? Uh, I guess for me, I'm gonna. Um, I'll say it's a solid. I'll, I'll go with a solid B. Um, you know, obviously, you know, it's great that the UFC was back in Brazil. Um, you know, I loved that the Brazilians pelted Brandon Moreno when he tried to get out of there. Like that was wild. Um, obviously, a little disappointed with the Figueiredo and. Davidson, the way the fight went and how his eye went. Um, I thought the main event was fantastic. Like, that was a great fight. Can we just talk about that for a second? Mm -hmm. um, after we get the rating from CJ. Gotcha. So, I'm going to rate mine on a different scale. And yeah, fuck school in and school no more. I'm going to go 1 to 10. So, at first, I had it at an 8 and a half because I was juiced up because Brandon won. I was riding hella high. But thinking about it again, I think it's about an eight. It was a super fun card from start to finish. Everybody that I kind of wanted to win won. It was exciting. I enjoyed it, especially yeah. having Brandon win. It took it, mm -hmm. it took me up there. <laughs> I was juiced. Yeah, I think I would give it a solid B, a solid eight out of ten. It it was a solid card. Uh, there was only I think four decisions. Out of the 15 fights that was mm -hmm. on there. So, like, like people were getting finished. It was moving at a fast pace. Like, we didn't have... The only fight on there that, like, I'm sure none of us remembers is the Cody Stamen <laughs> fight. Yeah. No, I remembered it. I took my nose down. He looked, he looked pretty good. I like the way he was moving in and out. He looked solid. Really? I, I yeah. was kind of tuning out in the fight. But from what I saw, I thought, I thought old boy was going to win the split decision. It was it was one of them shit that it could have went either way and you'd be like, Oh, okay, but hmm. I like the way he was moving. Yeah, yeah, I mean he was in there. He was in there to fight for sure. <laughs> That's, That's what I put in my notes, super close fight. Mm hmm Yeah. Uh five, including the main event. There were five yeah. um decisions. So sure. ten of them were finishes and I think we definitely um Want to look at your boy RoboCop? Mm. <laughs> your boy RoboCop got sent to Narnia. He he looks the part, but he ain't playing the part. <laughs> and we see. What'd you say, CJ? I mean, he he. I'm not gonna say he don't look the part. He don't play the part. He knocked motherfuckers out before. If shit happens in UFC, you get your chin touched, you're gonna go out. And that's what I was telling Mo during the fight. I was like, this dude looks good, Paul. I'm like, he's super athletic and big. And he was moving his head, and he just touched him right on the chin and put his ass down. Yeah. It, like, it can happen to anybody. Everybody says, like, oh, it's impossible to win. I'm like, bro, you're fighting. Anything could happen in this case in point. Put mm -hmm. it on his chin and knocked his ass out. Yeah. Right. And, and that's Bruno. dude's debut, too, so. Hey, yep. shout out to him. Hope he got 50 G's. <laughs> yeah, I, saw, I saw a few debuts where I was like, damn, like they yeah. really even fucking prove themselves. I respect that. You know, because yeah. you've seen some debuts where they get beat the hell up. Yeah. Damn, Usually. They in there with a veteran getting worked. But when you see a, a debut and they're the one that's putting in the work, like you, 
it's like a it's like a certain type of like I respect that. You feel me? Yeah, and then Bruno shout out to Terrence McKinney. <laughs> oh my god. Yeah, Bruno just put a stamp on his name too. If you think about it, he stepped in um kind of late on the fight. He comes in, knocks him out. Now people's name they're gonna be looking out for him now. He knocked out Robocop. Robocop was about to start being a um a ranked fighter. Now people are gonna be looking at Bruno differently. Mm-hmm. And once again, another contender series fighter. Start watching contender series. Um, because you really get to see people that like I gotta watch that. You really and, do and, like and it's, it. it's better than the ultimate fighter because it's just a full 100%. card. It's it's yeah. just a full card of scraps. Mm-hmm. I started watching it later on because I always miss whenever it comes on. I'm like, damn. But luckily mm-hmm. I got this stream thing I can put them on whenever <laughs> yeah yeah so definitely go back and start watching contender series because that's where you see a lot of these guys coming from the new stars you know mm-hmm. and now jamal hill is the first contender series champion yeah. so you had alex perez who fought and lost to figueredo taya santos who fought and lost to valentina and now mm-hmm. finally third time to charm jamal hill uh mm-hmm. wins against um glover to how'd you guys feel about the shogun hua fight against his ehor potieria Wait, can I ask a question real quick? Is yeah. um, um, Bruce Leroy is he from the Contender Series too? Mm-mm. He's from uh, no. no, yeah, he's yeah. he's been around for like years, thirteen 50. years now. Yeah, he's from the Ultimate Fighter. Okay, what about Chase Hooper? He's Chase from Hooper's the from there. Series. Yeah, <laughs> is he still a fighter? <laughs> hey, better watch out! His big brother's gonna get you. Cry off. Wait, who's his big brother? <laughs> Hey, nah, he didn't look like him. <laughs> he fought last. Uh, like, I gotta pull it up because when we seen him with my uh, daddy walks in and goes, "Hey, is that that kid?" I'm like, "No, but it looks like Chase." But that's not Chase. He's a Russian dude. Yeah, it's yeah. like the same thing. A little same Russian thing. Ben Askren. Yeah. Mm-hmm. <laughs> yeah. Ben Askren's kids. Exactly. But how did you guys feel about this fight? Like, as far as like for me, I thought the dance afterwards was super disrespectful. Like, dude, read the room. Yeah. Like, you know what I mean? Like, this is Shogun's retirement fight. You're in <laughs> Brazil. Yeah. yeah, you won, and that's cool. Like, yeah, do your thing. But at the same time, like, read the fucking room. And we don't need you getting on the mic talking about Ukraine and trying to be all political and shit after you didn't just dance on this dude's grave. Like, come on now. <laughs> like, we're not. I spit on your grave. Where it's is like, Carlito when you need him? I put in the in, in your live chat. I was like, that's whack. Like, you disrespected a, a legend. I don't mind the dancing. It's the pointing at him and then doing that. It's like, bro, like you know Shogun was on his way hella out the door. Right. Get you, dance on the side to yourself and then just get out. You you straight. But like pointing at him and doing all that extra stuff, yeah. that was kind of lame to me, bro. Yeah. That's crazy. It- That's a double-edged sword, ain't it? Mm-hmm. Some people, we love that shit. Like uh, when Patty the Batty finished uh, Jordan. Mm-hmm. He, he did a little tea bag and then was like, <laughs> and stuff, you know. But this, it's like, hey, man, there's a time and a place for that. There's <laughs> a time and a place. It, it, that's that's that kind of what it is, though. It's a time and a place, like you said. And a, a person who you. Shogun's a legend, bro. Shogun yeah. was knocking people out before this kid even thought about it's fighting actually, anybody. You know what I'm saying? Always. It's In like multiple organizations. Mm hmm. Mm-hmm. Maybe yeah. before he's even born. It may be because this dude's young as hell. Too. Yeah, like, he might be right, Trace. He wasn't, he wasn't your favorite fighter, but he's your favorite fighter's favorite fighter. You know, right. what I mean? like Shogun is that legendary. So, facts. shout out to Shogun. Shout out yeah. to Shogun. All respect. Big facts. Yeah. And, and doing it with the out- dad bot since way back then. <laughs> <laughs> you didn't even have to test him. <laughs> no, you good. Go ahead. <laughs> <laughs> that bobs are up. Um, Thank God. Johnny Walker, Johnny Walker versus Paul Craig. Johnny gets it done again. <laughs> like, like that was straight out of like a film where you see someone, you know, like when we see that in a, a film where a guy just catches a guy's leg and all of a sudden punches him and knocks him out with one punch. You're like, that shit never happens in real life. Johnny Walker says, "Hold my beer." <laughs> Crazy. Yeah, yeah. But Shout out to about- Johnny. That's what I was texting Sky. I'm like, bro, Paul Craig's the most fake, intimidating dude ever. You see him, and you're like, oh, man, this dude about to wreck shop. But he get in there, and he, all he want to do is just grapple you. 
So once some hands start coming, it, it, it turns into a different story with this dude. <laughs> sure. I'm screaming, Paul, let go of the leg. Yeah, I watched it again. I'm like, bro, he socked you up and you still grabbing him? Like, let your like, hands go. Or show some doing? urgency. Or, like, try to sweep his other leg. Or, like, yeah. you know, run him to the fence or something. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Don't just... that, that reminds me of, like, <laughs> present-day Cowboy Cerrone. You know what I mean? It's like, hey, man, like, you better than that. Why are you, you know, taking a shot and just looking at this man? You know he's supposed to be moving your head and bobbing and weaving. It's like the same type of thing. You know you're supposed to, like, you're not going to win with just jujitsu when you're trying to wrestle. You have to actually get the person to the ground yes. with some urgency, and then that's when you take your breath, when you're on top. Yeah. DC Absolutely. <laughs> <laughs> Facts. Facts. And then Lauren Murphy versus Jessica Andrade. I mean, this was a murder. This should have been stopped. I don't care what Laura, Laura Murphy on Twitter talking about. You guys are only saying that because it's two girls. No, bro. We're saying it because the fight should have been stopped. It was not competitive. You took 150 shots to the head alone. Like... Jessica Andrade had a sparring no not even a sparring session it's like a bag session on a your head mm -hmm. she hit like, pads out there that was not <laughs> damn she was hitting pads like that was, <laughs> that yeah. was scary dude like hey Lauren could take a fucking punch I gotta give her that facts. though she's tough as shit She tough as shit you know Jessica Andrade's hands hurting after this fight oh yeah. for sure yep if not something broken or fact fractured, like mm -hmm. when you just hit somebody like that, I mean the left hook w could not miss. The left hook could not miss. She was just, it was, it was, it was brutal. It was hard to watch. I was like, come on, Laura I Murphy. Think we all caught that one though, right? Huh? I think we all caught this one, right? Yeah. By, oh, I mean the MMA community. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> but you know, Lauren called out Jessica in Brazil. Like, I, I don't know what she thought. I don't know what the game plan was, but. Hey, trying to get that bag. She got, yeah. she, she got some nuts on her. But you can tell, you can look at Lauren Murphy. She hasn't, um, she hasn't grown. Her fight style is the same. She doesn't, she looked like the old school fighters from mm -hmm. 10 years ago. Mm -hmm. well, she is old. Yeah, she old as hell. And that's what I was telling Mo again, like I'll be talking to my girl. Um, she's not very athletic at all. Mm -mm. And uh, she barely started fighting not too long ago. So <laughs> Jessica been fighting all her, her whole damn life. Yeah, She outclassed her. It, it looked like she shouldn't even been in the ring with her at all. Facts. Facts. At all. Facts. But I'm saying, hey, get your money, baby girl. Shit. She got a bag <laughs> to get she beat up. And she, got, she took her ass whooping. Like got chicken. a nice trip to Brazil, huh? Mm -hmm. Hey, do what you gotta do. Uh, right. Same thing for your boy Neil Magny. Like, didn't show up. Everybody called out. <laughs> yeah. I just didn't expect it to be like that. <laughs> I kind of did. I kind of <laughs> just like that. Kind of. He big dog him. He yeah. really did. Yeah. He asserted himself in there. But a good like thing about that, though, Magny didn't take no punishment. <laughs> And <laughs> Burns didn't take no punishment. Get in, get out. Yeah. Hey. I feel like as short as it was, Magni learned a lot. And I feel like he's going to start working on that shit because it's a different breed when you're at the top like that. It's a different breed. Yeah. Yeah. Gilbert Burns did what Gilbert was supposed to do. Calls out Kobe Covington. Great Love call, call out. out. Great call out. Love the call out. I think, I think Kobe's more apt to fight. Gilbert than he is to fight Hamzat. I don't think I don't think he want that smoke. Please. Here comes Captain Save him Jace. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Who's Save who's Hamzat gonna fight next? He's supposed to he's supposed to kill Kobe, but Kobe's dodging. Stop it. Ducking, ducking and dodging. Kobe is not Kobe is not Kobe is not scared of a cum shot. Let's be honest. Look at that face. Won't be his first, won't be his last. Come so on. So who now. do you, Jace, who you think uh who has it with uh, Burns and Kobe? Between Burns and Kobe, I'm giving it to Kobe. Kobe, okay. I think in a, Kobe in a three round just, fight. Uh, three or five. I just think he puts a pace on him. Like I think we forget just because like people hate the character of Kobe and forget that your boy Kobe's a dog. Like he went in there against Robbie Lawler and put it the fuck on him. He yeah. could have just took him down and hit him with the wet blanket the entire time. He didn't. He set the welterweight record for strikes. Like he mm -hmm. beat the fuck out of a sack. Like 
all, I'm sure we all here have nothing but respect for Robbie Lawler. He put it on but the that's line. also an old ass Robbie Lawler with all right. those fight miles. That's in it don't, the clinch. It's not comparable. The strikes came in the clinch. That that's one thing that I wanted oh, yeah. to bring up, Jace, because I know you respect like the old school fighters and you, like ride for them and everything, but like. Like Father Time is undefeated. That's a real Facts. fucking statement. You could be the greatest in the world, but it's only for a certain amount of time. There's a Facts. prime, like you're in your prime for a reason, and I think that's just how that happened to be. You know, it was like, hey man, like young and up and comer, like hungrier than you. This is new to him. You've already been through all this. This man gonna run through you. <laughs> yeah, hundred percent. He needs to get to the top. So. Yeah, as I like, I understand where you're coming from. Like he did really put it on him, but I also agree with you. I feel like he would put the pace on Gilbert, and Gilbert would be, it it would almost be like the la the the Kamzat fight. Where, yeah, he'll land some strikes and everything, but ultimately he's gonna lose because old boy is taking the center of the octagon and inserting himself as the nigga. You know what I mean? And and not I to think, mention he okay. gave sorry real fast not to mention he mm -hmm. gave Usman everything he fucking wanted and some you know what I mean it was right there Kobe Covington is the second best welterweight on earth. I think if Burns hits him how he was hitting comes out, it's a yeah. wrap. Yeah, I think it's a wrap, and he can grapple just as well as as Kobe can. Mm -hmm. So. I don't know. I want to see that. Let's book that shit. We can talk all we want. Put it on paper. <laughs> I bet. He was taking some we'll heavy pay shots to from see that shit. <laughs> I feel like he was taking heavy shots from Usman and was still like in it with the broken jaw. Man bro, broke his jaw and made the nigga run out the cage. Bro, Get him out of here forever. His jaw was broken like that and he was still like pushing forward. That's wild. I was, to. I was like, bro. Oh, he still got TKO'd and he still got no TKO'd yeah, and still kept. ran out. Ran out. I was there live for that. And I was like, what? Where the hell is Kobe? And all you see is him running out. He's a guy. You're going to have to stop stunning on us and telling us that every fight you've been at. Damn. Just flex. God damn. Just flex. We over damn. here, you know, fucking Poe Pimpin and shit. But well, she also live in Vegas. So yeah. I know. That's true. I was saying that. Too. Yeah. 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 <laughs> and you and you know what? I went back and I looked at that card, um, Damien, the one that we went to, mm -hmm. and we you're right, we did see Zabit on that card. Mm -hmm. He was the main one right before uh he was right after Johnny Walker and then they had Zabit. And that's why like on the live stream this weekend I was telling people like, Man, like if y'all get tickets to go somewhere, because Brazil was not there. They should have been there the very first card. They were not there, and I'm like, if you get tickets, go see the whole fight card. Like don't what be like, uh I'm just yeah. going to show up for the main event. Like, no, show up for the whole card. Because mm -hmm. you end up missing people. Your people on it. Yep. You know? And you got to rep them, bro. Like, them people that are on the prelims, the early prelims, them the people that are going to be on the main card. And you could have been like, hey, I saw him when he was little and he was working his way up. And now look at him. Like, yep. you a real fan for that. You know, yeah. you've been following bro. him through the UFC is, if, journey. You're going to spend. 200 to however much. Mm. Man, I'm about to get all my motherfucking mm. money's worth. All, all of it. it. <laughs> I told Sky, it. I'm going to try to be in there before the popcorn is popping. Shit. Right. <laughs> I'm trying to see him set the octagon up and everything. I don't give a fuck. I'm in there. <laughs> right. You, yeah. I don't, and you, I, we were watching, we were like, I, I thought because Brazil usually be up in there turned up from the start to the end. We were watching, mm -hmm. we were like, Nobody's in there right now, and it was past four fights already. We're like, what the hell's going on? Yeah. Where's everybody at? As well, I mean, we don't know. Uh, I don't know if y'all are aware of the pool, the political, political. term owner going on in Brazil. So it might have just been security nightmare to get inside. I was you know, thinking I that as well, been, too. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I know a few games that I've been to, uh, soccer games, that is, where I have literally stood in line for two hours to get in, just in my feelings. Damn. Two hours. Yeah. Nah. Nah. And then moving on to, you know, somebody sound the sombrero. You know, <laughs> let's go. Brandon Moreno and new and again, flyweight champion of two the world. Two times. Two times. Two times. Uh, complete shutout. Damn. Viva Mexico, no. Pero. No. 
Let's no. fucking go. You don't think it was? I mean, a, oh, wait a minute. Hot take. Jace is crazy. He thinks Figueroa won the first round. What? Go back Man. and watch it. Hey, hey, delete him off the motherfucking podcast, bro. Get him. <laughs> hey, guess what, Scott? Hey, guess what? He won the first round. He won the second round. But it don't fucking matter because we got the strap. Get him out of here. Go to another <laughs> division, my guy. <laughs> Ah, he wants to go matter. to 135 and get dogged. Walk. Mm, I don't know about that. We'll see. Yes, hey, who, he what he going to look like against Jan? Mm. Well, why you say Jan? Because you know Jan is my dude. <laughs> Be- because you, know, figure- you know Jan is my dude. Yes, why you say Jan? <laughs> because Figgy, because Figgy is, a, is a former champ. So you can't go up. We're not going to see him fight Ricky yeah. Simone, which I yeah. like Ricky. But you know what I mean? Like book. He has to. He That'd has be a to, good I know, fight too, though. That's yeah. gonna be a good fight. Uh Sonya Dong versus Ricky. That's gonna be mm-hmm. uh, a banger. But like you can't put Figgy up against you have to put him against somebody in that top ten. I mean that top five. So I know that Jan is gonna be fighting um uh Marab, but still, like when you look at it, it's like he how do you think he's gonna do against him? He's too how small, you, man. That's what I'm saying. How do you think he's gonna do against Sean O'Malley? The, the height difference. He, he would beat the shit out of Sean. He would beat the shit out of Sean O'Malley. Fuck no. Ah uh, no. Beat no. the Hell shit no. out of Sean O'Malley. No, yeah. Sean too fast. Yeah. He too long. Bruh. Come yeah. on, bro. In the mind games, bro. Sean, Sean O'Malley are are it's piecing him up. I think Figueroa is not on the same level, but very similar to a Peter Yan. And we all know that Peter Yan beat Sean O'Malley. Give a fuck what they said. Oh my God! What? Do you think? <laughs> wait, 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 Damon. Do you think that Sean O'Malley won that fight I, I, against Peter Young? The fight. I it was a close fight. fight. <laughs> it was a close fight. It and, really was. And guess who was leaking and, and, and looking all shook? <laughs> Pete Piotr Young. Oh man. man, your boy O'Malley's getting dropped like a bad habit. Stop it. Nah. How does he do against Marlon Chito Vera? <laughs> Banger. Oh, Biggie. That'll be yeah. banger. Marlon, Marlon beating his ass. Banger. Oh, Marlon whooping his ass. San Hagen tearing his saying. ass up too. That's what Listen. I'm saying. Hey, hey, it sounds good. <laughs> right, they're just too hey. big. We will Aljo find out. taking them down and just backpacking them. We will find out shortly. We will they're find out shortly. They're talking about having them fight with uh, Cruz, so we should see how that goes. Really? If that happens. Yeah. Oh, feet. That's feet. out at the top, the top 10. Because like if you think about the... The 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 one through five. It's like, bro, come on, man. It's not going. I like Figgy's boxing. He's he has good hands, and it he, ain't gonna he be rolling and and slipping shots. Is is, but he doesn't do it without <clears throat> countering. That's the thing. When he's moving and bobbing and weaving and slipping shots, he's throwing counters at the same time, and that's what I'm like. You know, I feel like. Uh, uh, Dominic Cruz, he's really good with foot move, like footwork and everything, but he don't be striking when he should be. That's all. Yeah, I think I think uh, old boy beats Dominic Cruz for sure. It'll be a fun fight though. Keep one fight, thing in yeah. mind. To me, Figgy <laughs> is like how y'all say uh, Hamzad is at 185. Right now, Hamzad's uh, much bigger. Than everybody at 170, you know, so he's able to really put his weight on him. He's he's just a bigger dude than those dudes, right? But when he goes up to 185, they're bigger than him. Figgy was massively bigger than everybody at 125, so he was able to bully everybody and do whatever he wanted to do. Now that he's up here at 135, Sky, 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 not everybody. Who? Not everybody. Hey. <laughs> not everybody. <laughs> Viva Mexico, perro! Oh, I love two it. Time, two times, two times, two times. Not everybody. Ooh, two, two times. I mean, he lost the Scott, title. What was to the softest what was you dude saying, in the though? division? Sky, what was you saying? Huh? He definitively beat him how many times? Two times. Yes. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Figgy only won on close decisions. I don't think it was close. Oh, okay. Obviously, you, you don't want to have like a real conversation. <laughs> hey, his beanie is on too tight. <laughs> Listen, man, I'm gonna need y'all to stop trying to make me sound like Skip Bayless on the show. Stop it! Stop it! Uh, I mean, we like you. Want to know what it 
this. I'm not even gonna lie and say we like Figgy. I, I don't like Figgy. I don't like his personality. His personality. Yeah. I didn't like how he was trying to like. He was just trying to do too much when that energy wasn't needed in the exchanges with Brandon. Because Brandon's just like, okay, cool, dude. Like, we've already done this before. Like, there's no reason for you to try to bully me and try to talk. Mm -hmm. Like, I just didn't like that energy. And so it's like, it made it so much easier to like Brandon because Brandon's not on that. And it's like, there's a time and a place to be like, you know, all aggressive. Like, mm -hmm. like their first fight, I was like, oh, man, Figgy, it made sense. It was their first time going at it. You know, Figgy was aggressive. But now it was just like, playing the music like at the last little thing it was just awkward and weird and i don't i i think it's because he started hanging out with henry cejudo yeah <laughs> mm -hmm. yeah yeah, yeah. You know, so, let's also not forget that uh cejudo was you know a double champ and he was not the biggest 125er so let's just see what happens with figgy i'm done with talking about it though let's but talk about your boy <laughs> 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 You would have swore we were talking about the 49ers right now. Like, the kind of energy you all. <laughs> Shout out to the Niners. Uh, and then, of course, you know, why the hell did they put Glover's younger pitcher up here? What? I can't really tell. What are they <laughs> on? Let me see if it'll let me, like, zoom in and uh, put it on oh, here right better. so okay. y'all can see yeah, this. Looks small. That's better. Hold on. Dang. Let me... Let me show y'all this, because this is crazy. Oh, it ain't going to let me. Never mind. It's not going to let me show it the way that I want to show it. But, like, Glover Teixeira, thank you for your time here. Yep. Yep. <laughs> yep. 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 What, what else can we say about, I mean, Glover is a dog. Glover Teixeira is a dog. Mm -hmm. He Glover never gave up. Not your boy split second in there. Your boy Glover Teixeira was tougher than a fucking two dollar steak. Incredible. Mm. Well done. Yeah. Well done. <laughs> like Glover went in there and even like when the fifth round came and like he knows he has to get a finish and he finally takes him down, he's on top. I'm like, let's go, Glover, let's go. And when Jamal snuck underneath, I was like, oh, heartbreak. I it it was um but it was an honorable performance to go yeah. out on. Mm -hmm. You know, Jamal Hill went inside there, and Jamal looked good from start to finish. Striking looked good. Does Jamal Hill got some pretty quick hands. Like, yeah. pretty, like hey, you know what he got? He, like, he got he nigga hands, bro. <laughs> he got <laughs> nigga <laughs> hands. He fight <laughs> like a nigga, bro. Because <laughs> yeah. like one time like, he did back like a nigga. was like, boom. I was like. <laughs> uh -huh. Yeah. I mean, his, his boxing isn't like that, Chris. Because, like, I've been seeing that chin fly up in the air when he's, like, yeah. retreating and stuff. Yep, exactly. Right? <laughs> <laughs> like, how niggas be fighting, for real. Yep. <laughs> you ain't even lying. But hey, uh, like, when he was throwing, he was quick. And, he, and it looked like if it landed, like, it would have really hurt. Shit, it did land. <laughs> that shit was landing all. Did you not see Glover's face? All that shit was landing all night. Some ones where I was like, mm, because it was so <laughs> close. <laughs> like, oh, that one would have fucking sparked him. I will mm -hmm. say um, that second round is the best round of 2023 I've seen so far because it was so back and forth and back and forth and back and forth. But I want to ask y'all specifically this. Is anyone scared of Jamal Hill slash... How long does he keep the title for? Hmm. Scared? I'm, I don't think nobody who fights in the UFC is scared of another motherfucker. I don't think that's a thing. You like, you pay the so? fucking... Scared? No. That's scared. That's I don't think that's the scared. appropriate fucking word. Hell no. Nah. They ain't scared. Or nervous. But well, how I long he keeps the title? I did the shit. I don't fucking know. Okay, that's wait. Quick time out. Quick time out. You can't say scared. Like, did you not see Edison... Barbosa after in between rounds when Habib grabbed him. <laughs> oh my god! <laughs> oh my god! <laughs> oh my god! You could put all of them in the lineup, and they all got the same face at, in between rounds. Sorry though, y'all were saying. Uh, um, how long does he keep it? How long does he keep it? Do you what? think this will be an actual title reign? Uh, the, uh, no, I don't think it's going to be that long. So in that division, you have obviously Yuri, 
as oh, number yeah. one. You know, that'd, be, that, that'd be super fun. Probably, yeah. Magomed and Goliath. Mm. They both piece him the fuck up. Jan Blahovich. Piece him in, up. Piece him Alec- Jamal up. Mm-hmm. I, I feel like he don't got the cardio to be like, them niggas be in there. <laughs> <laughs> Rackage. Um, Rackage at four. Uh, then Anthony Smith. Um, <laughs> which I don't even know he was still fighting in the division. Well, one, so. Anthony Smith was supposed to fight Jamal prior oh, to yeah. them booking this fight, and, and Anthony came out and fought him. Um, on Ariel's show, they were suggesting that maybe um, Anthony Smith fight next for the title against Jamal. And then they had Yuri Prohaska on there on Monday as well, and Yuri said that he thinks that Anthony Smith should be able to fight for the title next against Jamal. Um, nah, but you can't be scheduled as a backup for the championship fight and not and not make weight. Facts. You know? This man... Sente Luque did. <laughs> 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 nah, but like that's like you if you there for the backup, you need to be like uh Alexander Volskanovsky. Like you need to take that shit serious as if it is your fight. Like you and you about to be walking in that octagon that night. And I feel like the way he had to cut like what? He had to cut like four pounds or something. And he cut like two like, hours. <laughs> he cut like three and a half. <laughs> it's like, hey man, like you should have been prepared because this could have been like not only a legacy seller, but a payday too, and you you kind of fumbled it. Yeah. Like for, like for the future, you know, I guarantee you they don't they don't do that same shit with him because he wasn't even, <laughs> it wasn't even, it wouldn't have been a championship fight. Mm-hmm. Well, at least not for him. Yeah. yeah. Um. Yeah. So I, it's hard because I like Jamal, right? And I would like to see him continue at least get a defense in, mm-hmm. but. Who are, I mean, mm, 125, yeah, but... it's just, when I look at his skill set as a whole, I don't see him being able to, you said I don't see him, I'm sorry, Two, yeah, I did say that, sorry, 205, um, yeah, I, I don't see him reigning for long, like, he might yeah. get a defense, but it depends who it's against, like, mm-hmm. I don't see him beating Ankoliath or Jan, Damn. Well, what I don't, I don't, I don't even see him beating... Perea, if he comes up, Perea will starch the fuck out of him. Oh, oh yeah. Too. You see my eyes on him? That yeah. That'll like, be that'll be fun though. Dead. That'll be fun to watch. He said, "You doing that to Glover? Nah, dog. You out of here. <laughs> you want to see me? <laughs> I'm retiring you early. <laughs> big brother. <laughs> big brother. Hey, yo. You about to join Darren Till over there? <laughs> hey, hey, Omar's coming. Hey, hey yo. <laughs> Omar's hey. coming. Hey, hey. but. <laughs> But you know what? One thing is true. Once a champion, always a champion. I was just about to say Jamal that. You can never take it away from him. No, got the strap. Yeah. But what I was going to say is yeah, that uh, maybe being the champ now sparks something different in his training and how yeah. he goes about doing things. He just maybe elevate to a different level. Mm-hmm. We don't we don't ever know. So He got championship they, money now. They got to come see him. He got the strap. Maybe come out here and knock the motherfuckers out. Yeah. <laughs> Oh, or we're seeing, like, we see him at Jackson Wink or something. Yeah. <laughs> and like, you know, Uh-oh. like you said, CJ, um, sometimes being a champion does bring out something different in somebody. Something like different. the, the yeah. level of confidence that they have, uh, the level of dedication that they go inside mm-hmm. there with. Mm-hmm. And then we have like we've seen Jamal Hill fight, but we didn't know that his grappling was gonna be that good against Glover. We don't know really know what he looks like because he has been starching people. Yeah, Paul Craig dislocated his arm. You know what I mean? That's his only loss was against Man Paul Craig. Man didn't even tap though. <laughs> yeah, he did it. Yeah, the, 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 the um the ref had to stop it. So yeah. it's like we haven't really got a chance to really see him, and we weren't expecting him to be at a, at a title fight this far. So it's this like early, yeah. And that's why when I was telling y'all last week to go and watch the UFC breakdown when Safe Saud was uh, breaking down Jamal Hill's game. That's why I started being like, oh, this is that kind of made me start leaning towards Hill because I wasn't really putting enough respect on his game. And then when you see like this world class coach come through and start breaking it down, I was like, oh, okay, like. It's not like he's just like some random bum that just ended up here at the top. You know what I mean? Like, mm-hmm. um, so we don't know what we're gonna see from him. He might go up against Magomed, and 
his wrestling defense is on point. His striking is crispy. And he takes him out. We're like, wait yeah. a minute. Maybe we don't know who this man is. Like, we haven't allowed him to fully develop. And yeah. this is only, I think, like his sixth or seventh fight in, like, the UFC. Or eighth fight, I think, in the UFC. You know, so he's got time. You know, it'll be interesting to see uh, what happens. Speaking of Safe Sahud, he's also was the head coach of your boy Brandon Moreno. And if you guys haven't, there is a documentary on YouTube um, called The Last Dance, Brandon Moreno, because that was the theme for this camp. Brandon Moreno had a torn, had a messed up knee. It was either LCL or MCL. But he has a, he has a legitimate knee injury that happened four weeks out that they got on tape at the PI. So he was dealing with all of that and still killed Figgy. Um, yeah, but in that documentary, one thing that I really like <laughs> that, uh, Safe Saul did, and the reason why I really like Safe is because he's really good at, like, getting down and breaking stuff down to the nitty gritty, and on there, he talked about the main thing that I was upset about personally when I seen Brandon and Figgy fight the last time, which was, like, if you guys remember, like, when Brandon came out, he had his hands here, but his head was up here. And he was, like, doing, like, this real, like, cocky thing. That like, I was like, why are you in that, like, why are you postured like that? And so throughout their training camp, because this uh, documentary shows, like, their whole little training camp, like, Safe is talking about that. He was like, yo, when you had a couple, when you landed a couple good strikes in your sparring session, you know, you started getting proud, and you start doing that thing. He's like, fucking cut that out. Like, and they start going over that. And so, like, Mm. This I just want to say that like you know it just ain't no fluke. That's dope. Ain't no yeah. fluke. And his grappling hey, looked amazing. Hey, too. I guarantee that was the that, best Moreno we've seen. I guarantee you though, if Moreno would have hit him in the forehead with that thumb, that shit would have oh, broke broken. his shit. Yeah, it would have been broken. <laughs> it would have been an entirely different fight, probably. Yeah, it, it just so happened to be on point and hit him right in the eyeball, <laughs> and you know yeah. it hurt because old boy was. He was looking panicked in there, like, hey, man, hold on, my eye, hold on. <laughs> and that thing closed immediately. Yeah. Like, uh, your boy, I can't think of the name, the guy who fought uh, Kimbo Slice in the backyard after he got oh, popped he, in the he, eye. He knocked his eye out. Right, yeah. <laughs> yeah. With the uppercut. <laughs> Not in the middle of the fight saying, hey, dog, chill. <laughs> chill, dog. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. let, let me get this TV time out real fast, my dude. <laughs> right. Uh, one thing to keep in mind next week, it is we don't have any fights this week. Does one have a fight? I think one. Uh, there's fights this Friday, but it's hella early in the morning. Oh, okay, so won't be seeing that. And then following next weekend, um, I guess we don't even necessarily have to even look at that car right now because there's just know that it starts at 1 a.m. Eastern time. 10 p.m. Pacific time, which majority of us are on. Um, I will be watching the Bellator. Bell, I was going to say Bellator comes on uh, next one week, time. too. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, so that'll be interesting. Oh, one thing that we haven't had an opportunity to talk about. Uh, are you guys excited to watch one championship is having an open weight Muay Thai event tournament? It's about to be fire. You're about to be high be level, mm. high level strike. High can you, level. Can you imagine <laughs> open weight Muay Thai? Like Muay Thai is already like vicious. Open weight? Oh, I cannot wait. This is gonna be the best tournament of the year to me. There will be blood. <laughs> there will be blood. One, yeah, ambulances on the sidelines watching. I Muay, love Thai, Muay Thai is brutal. Um, I was telling Sky earlier that, you know, I was fortunate enough to have been to Thailand a couple of times and I went to their national stadium and watched um, an event in person. So in Thailand, it's really weird because they start off with like kids. When I mean kids, I mean like they start off full contact, no headgear, no nothing. Um, kids starting off about seven, eight years old. And I was sitting in the front row and I saw this 12 year old kid because they go like the uh, six years old, seven years, just go up. I saw this like 12 year old get knocked unconscious out of the ring in front of me. And I was just like, <laughs> oh shit, like brutal. You don't even know how to yeah. feel about it. Hey, but they be clean with their striking too as little kids. Hey, one. It'd be almost mm -hmm. weird. Like, how are you? You only eight. You only ten. You only twelve. Like you got a whole, 
you've been doing this since what three years old you must have since cause... birth yeah <laughs> well what they do is th in thailand over there is they kind of sell their kids to these um kickboxing facilities and they literally just okay they like adopt them it's wild mm -hmm. give them a place yeah. to live they feed them and all they do is train from morning to night i already know oh can we talk about like how great it would be me and sky was talking about this if there was a grand prix between all of the organizations like you take your champ you take your champ you take your champ and we all throw it in the mix and see who is the king of kings i love that kind of stuff i wish they would do more stuff like that you know I, that's some kind of stuff the fans want to see they stand i you. think i think that pfl one and bellator should really just mob together and do it Right, because if they do, if all three of them do it, and the U, obviously the UFC is not going to do it, right? Because that's not a part of their business model. So if they don't do it, then all the fans are going to be looking like, why are you hey, not coming in here? Well, what why you are you not of? doing it? Like, yeah, yeah like y'all said, y'all the y'all the best. Like, yeah, it really, so you have no it would, problem. <laughs> exactly, it would apply pressure, and it would give these other three organizations an opportunity to really push their names and get out there. Mm -hmm. I think that'd be dope if, if they would just like come together and do it because like I know like I'm excited for Bellator's uh, 155 tournament that's going to be going on this year. You know they announced the dates for though like March 10th. Uh, you're gonna have Benson Henderson versus Nurmagomedov, and then oh, who else is uh, fighting that same day? Somebody else from the tournament is fighting that same day. I need to look it up and. Do, uh, Jace, did you see that they did match uh, uh, Pip, Pip, Patricky and AJ? And AJ, yeah. Mm. To start it off. Cannot wait. So let me ask you all this. If you all could cross promotion any dream matchup, any dream fight, what would you like to see? Damn, that's a good one. Damn. Any um, dream promotion? Damn, that's a good one. Any promotions and just put them together. So what, what, you got first? what you got first? Yeah, what I'll say why, why y'all thinking about it. So for me, my dream fight, it would be to see MVP, Michael Venom Page, take on the UFC's Stephen Thompson in an yeah. elite karate fight. Like that would just be so crazy to have two elite karate guys going at it. Oh man, Christmas will come early for me. That'd be fire. Yeah. MVP is 170? Yeah. Or is he fight? Yeah, one seventy. He fights one seventy. Steven to fight one seventy. Let's run it. I wish I, I wish MVP was in the UFC though. Honestly, yeah. honestly. I say just to throw a wrench, just to get messy. Fedor versus John Jones. Just mm. because Jay said Fedor's the goat, <laughs> could you imagine? Could you imagine? <laughs> I mean. <laughs> It would be great, but I mean, Fedor is, yeah, but Fedor is about to retire. I mean, this is his last fight. I mean, I still would watch it 100%. But you know the outcome already. And I still think that Fedor gets it done. Nah, I man, think Fedor gets no. it done. No way. He can't, bro. Motherfucking Dan that. Henderson put this guy to sleep, bro. Night, night. You can't lose to Ryan Bader and then be the GOAT. I don't give a fuck who you are, bro. Ryan Bader? So Ryan Bader? Are you done? Are you done? Uh, Dan are Henderson, you done? Matt Small. Come on, bro. Nah. Get that nigga out of here. What are you talking about, Dan Henderson? Dan Henderson didn't beat Fedor. Sky, please send mm -hmm. it to your man. Uh -oh. Send it to your brother. It please send it to him. So he knocked his ass the fuck out. Oh, yeah. Uh, I don't know. Oh shit! I would like to see a uh, DJ fight, um, motherfucking Moreno. That'll be fire. I can't uh, ever go against the go. I can't. I can't ever go. Against I'm not him. either. I just wanted to see a scrap. That'll be yeah. cool as hell. I think DJ wins though. DJ Who wins. Put Rod Tank against. Damn, fuck. Uh, let me see. Rod Tank's what? One thirty-five. One thirty-five. One thirty-five. That's a DJ, uh -huh. but that didn't already happen. Yeah. Um, you know, just a Muay Thai fight? Oh, no. you know, be yeah, nice. yeah, Muay Thai. Pure. Put him against O'Malley. He'll tear O'Malley's legs up. 
<laughs> I would like to see him with, with Raw Tag is bad too. That'd be a good a good stand up match. Yeah, I feel like it would be pretty equal. Who'd you say? Uh, uh, Piotr Jan versus Raw Tang. <sighs> That'd be fun too. Yeah. Two machines. Those dudes are just boom. Mm-hmm. Two machines like, going I at it. Like it would be really well matched. I think Raw Tang would get it done, but I feel like it would be a very entertaining fight, and I wouldn't count Piotr Jan out. Me either. I see like when I see his sparring footage up at Tiger Muay Thai Tiger, in, in yeah. Thailand. It's scary. Yeah, I know a lot of fighters that train up there, and when I see them training at Tiger Muay Thai, I don't know why, but I put them like at the top of the elite striking list. If you're mm-hmm. training at Tiger Muay Thai, like you really about the shit. <laughs> that's, yeah. that's really how I feel. Anytime I see anybody training up there. Who do you think's going to win against Marab versus Peter Yan? Marab. That's coming up in March. I think Peter Marab's going to win, but it's going to be like a born, like a born. That's what I text Sky. She sent it to me. I was like, yeah. It's Marab probably going to win by grabbing him and putting him on the fence and nothing exciting. Yeah, I think there's some really good upcoming fights that are happening. Because uh, I don't think there's any good upcoming fights that are happening. <laughs> <laughs> Bob Strait is uh, almost here. What John, you mean? John Jones. Yeah. Vulcan yeah. Islam. John Jones, Islam. Yeah, those are two great That ones. card, that John Jones card is going to be fire that's in vegas too right yeah Yeah, they are stacking that card ridiculously yeah Yeah. them ticket Ticket. price is about to be crazy (laughs) who's on that card (laughs) like confirmed there's there's a lot of fighters confirmed on that card yeah Mm -hmm. john valentina's fighter is that is that darren right there on the right no that's amanda rebus oh rebus Rebus. yeah so they they got bo nickel making his debut they got who's he fighting oh he uh jeremy jamie pickett yeah like 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 I told Jace, I'm not calling George Neal, uh, Jeff Neal. Jeff Neal. Uh, Jeff Neal. I'm calling him G-Off because that's how his name is spelled. <laughs> it's G-Off. Like, I've that is... all the time. How do you oh, get he's, Jeff he's out of fighting, that? Uh, uh, he's fighting from Monaco. Yeah. 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 Is that Cody Garbrandt they right got... there? Yeah. Yep, Cody's no, fighting too. No is that chance. a Cody Garbrandt song? Oh, my God. Who's he awake? Who's Cody awake? Julio Arce. Arce. Damn. Arce goes, this, hey, yeah. it's been a tough hey, role for your boy, to, Cody, man. They want to Cody packing, man. They, no. they want him out of the UFC for some reason. Cody should be gone. He's on a four-fight knockout streak. That's what I'm mean, saying. Like... But, and yeah. they're eating him like dogs, too. I don't. Is that fight that. at 25 or 35? 35. Mm. Yeah. I guess the uh, experiment's yeah. over. I already see the gloves. On the ground after this one, <laughs> <laughs> it should. Yeah, he should give it up, man, because he be getting slept, slept too. Right, it's just Listen. like everyone that's coming up in that division is just extremely like well rounded compared to his. Just I'll, I'll hit the, sh- I'll knock you out with one punch. You know, it it, it only gets you so far. <laughs> I'm gonna say it right now: Cody Garbrandt wins TKO. Mm. What? That'd, that'd be that'd be nice for him. I don't see it happening. I think Cody's too fast for him. Man. J- Jace, you're not keeping up with these uh, hot takes that you keep putting out here. <laughs> I'm like, you said God's most smart. <laughs> hey, you know, you got to dare to be great. I put my name out there anytime. You know what I'm saying? Hey, but I was going to say, we didn't we didn't talk about this Tiago Moises, how he flip flop like, like a chancla over here. <laughs> oh my god! I'm Man, oh, oh, before we talk about the Thiago's, uh, they just added Dan Hooker and Jalen Turner to one. Oh yeah, I posted that today. Did they? Yes. I think uh, Jalen Turner tarantula gets him, him, gets him out of here. I think so. Yeah, he's too I think big. So. Damn. So. Damn, getting pieced up lately too for some reason. He lost. His, he won his last fight actually. Yeah, getting butt. He's over there scut-butting <laughs> oh, around uh, on the Claudio. Claudio. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Because he didn't that. want to fight an MMA fight. He wanted to sit around there and play jiu-jitsu. It's like, come on, dude. Get yeah. up. Stop it. You look silly. Um, yeah. How you going to feel, uh, CJ, about your girl Alexa Grasso going up against your queen, Valentina Shevchenko? So that's one of those things, like oh, Glover and Jamal. 
if somebody does beat her, I'd rather it be somebody that I I can go for and root for because I root for Alexa Grasso. So I won't. I'm not mad at that kind of shit. So mm-hmm. Viva la Raza forever. It's just gonna it's just gonna be entertaining no matter what happens. Yeah. I don't like motherfuckers that I don't like winning the belt. So mm. speaking of I, motherfuckers you don't like, your boy <laughs> Conor McGregor back yeah. in the news again. Oh, Mo was just telling me about some wild shit he was doing. This man always hey. always in trouble. He is notorious. Yo, this story is <laughs> wild. This story is wild. Here's a quick synopsis. As they were on their uh, jet, as they were on his yacht, which is pro- <laughs> remember when I sent you that that video of him? Like he put posted the video of his wife or somebody. We don't know if it was his wife. Give some woman top. giving him head on top of the uh, yacht. <laughs> that's what he posted on his story. Like that's that was wild. That same day, or that same trip. Apparently, one of his neighbors, a 42 year old woman, was on there with him. She claims that Connor kicked her and punched her and said that he was going to kill her mm-hmm. or I'm sorry, drown her. And so she feared for her, her, her life so much that she jumped off the yacht into the freezing cold <laughs> water. Red cross <laughs> picked her up out of the water. And when they picked her up, she didn't say that it was Connor who did it, but they said that when she got back to Ireland, cause this was all took place in, in Ibiza, Spain. When she got back to Ireland, she told the Ireland police that it was Connor. So they're like, why did she flip flop on the story? Blah, blah, blah. I'm like, listen, I, I, I got to hear more details about this because it seems a bit crazy. Like, I need to know, did y'all report somebody missing off of y'all boat? Like, did, were y'all like, hey, somebody's missing? Like, our head count? Like, after somebody then jumped off into the damn water? <laughs> like, like, that in itself is crazy. Like, something definitely happened for somebody to jump off. I'm not saying that these allegations are true. I don't know. I don't have enough information. But like to jump off of a yacht into the the ocean water? and swim away. <laughs> There's sharks out there. Like what? Sounds That's like crazy. a movie. That's, That's crazy. crazy. Connor's a shark. She saw the videos of him piecing the old boy at the bar. She's telling hey, old old man took it like a champ. <laughs> hey, he ate that though, huh? Yes, he did. <laughs> I was like, oh, Connor, you really ain't got no power because this dude is eighty and took it. <laughs> Master, may I have another? <laughs> hey, is that Jace. what happened for proper twelve? <laughs> yeah, yeah, man, uh-huh. got mad because he, he ain't like his whiskey. He was like, no, I'm not drinking this bullshit. <laughs> <laughs> it makes you weak in a pussy. <laughs> 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 Listen, when uh, Jason and I, we were at a bar. It was like one of the first times I just turned 21 and we hit, were here in Vegas. We went to a bar and we're watching the, the 49ers play. Yeah, we were watching the 49ers play. And next thing you know, Jason's like, hey, watch out. Or like, watch behind you. Like, get up. Like, come over here. Because he's noticing this commotion taking place beside me. Uh, finish the story, Jason. <laughs> so, long story short, we're in this little shitty bar in Vegas, off the strip, of course, because that's where we get cheap drinks. And uh, <clears throat> this dude was probably like 25, 30 years old. And nose to nose with this cat who had to be 75. Damn, right? oh, wow. And they are nose to nose. And I'm just like, damn, this old motherfucker want this smoke? And all I heard with him say was like, look at my fucking face. Do you see any scars on my face? Nah, there's no scars on my face for a reason. What do you want to do? I was like, oh, <laughs> <laughs> oh, oh my God. Oh my God. Stand down. Stand down, young man. Stand <laughs> down. I was like it. Yeah, he did. <laughs> he because yeah, right. he was like, point. "Hey, I've done." He's like, <laughs> "I've spent X amount of years in the military. You see any scars on my face? There's no scars there for a reason." I was, "Oh shit." <laughs> yeah, That's so. some cold shit to say to somebody. <laughs> <laughs> That's yeah, a bad so. man. You get off the smoke. On. Yeah, who knows what's going on with your boy Connor? You know. um, uh, his coach was on Ariel Hawani's show on Monday and said that like he definitely feels like Connor will be back in the octagon this year. Doesn't know his whole thing is like he wants him to go up against somebody that really makes him excited, who gets him you know like motivated to fight, not just like oh yeah sounds good. You know what I mean? I'm always gonna be going for my boy, blessed Holloway. You know, Maybe. give him his shot, red panty night. Um, is he still a fighter? 
He was about to take your boy Arnold Allen out. <laughs> CJ, you're not getting uh, robbed, are you? I was going to say, I think it's too early for Connor to be coming back, honestly. I mean, as big as he looks, like, on the sauce and everything, like, I know that he's not training at 100%, even though if he feels like he is 100%. Yeah, because right? that that juice gonna give you some false confidence, and the break that he had was a very serious injury. That's not something mm-hmm. you just fucking. I'm a baby it for a few months, and now I'll be straight. Like, look at what happened with um, Anderson Silva. You know what I mean? Ever since he broke, yep. snapped his shit, he was never the same. Cause Mm-mm. you can't be, you can't be. And I feel like it's really going to hinder him, and he should really probably take some time. He might even want to consider retiring, maybe go into boxing or something else, honestly. His um, his coach came out, who was on Area Hawani, and said pretty much like 100% Connor is fighting this year. Mm-hmm. John yeah. Kovanoff, yeah, said that I, shit. I wonder who he's going to be fighting, because if it's somebody in the top five, hell, the top it's, ten, it's going to be a, a rough night for him, I feel like. It's it's going to be 100% Michael Chandler. I feel like 100%, because Connor feels like that's a fight that he can win. He knows he doesn't really have to worry. Like, he knows what, what, what um, Michael Chandler is going to do. They're going to go out there. They want to bang, bang. And I think Connor believes, and I'm not going to say Connor is wrong, has the crisper striking, you know what I mean? And like, probably gets Chandler out of there, which is sucks because Chandler is the most exciting guy on all of MMA. But but what, what Connor are we going to see? We're going to see boxing Connor? Because I don't want to see boxing Connor, bro. I want to see kickboxing Connor. That's the Connor that I really like rocked with, right? This man gets you in range. He's going to throw a body kick because he'd be setting up his strikes. The other Bonner, the other Connor we saw didn't move his head at all. He didn't. <laughs> he he was barely like taking little steps at a time. Like I want to see kickboxing Connor, not boxing Connor. So I feel like if he goes in there and tries to box with Michael Chandler, smaller than him, he's probably gonna have a little trouble with the range. But Michael Chandler got some bombs on him. Yeah. Michael Michael Chandler throws everything with three hundred percent. Uh-huh. <laughs> from the very first clap of the, you know, ding, ding, let's go. Facts, facts. He's out there trying to KO you because he knows the opportunity that he has. He sees it, and he wants to, you know, take that 100% of that opportunity. So Connor better be careful with that one. I hope Because I feel like Connor taking that fight, he going to go in there with his ego. You know what I mean? He not going to really be prepared to be fighting like a champion-type mm. fighter. Mm. But see, for me, that's why I think that it's a uh, that's a real risky fight for him to come back into to mm-hmm. come back into Chandler because if you think about it, I, hey, since y'all want to give Tony a fight, get a fight to Tony, somebody that Connor can actually come back and beat because he's not coming mm-hmm. back and beating uh, Michael Chandler. It's too I much feel power. Like, I feel like Tony too easy. I feel like that's another you're feeding him a, a Donald Cerrone again. But he needs that. Does he though? Yes. Cause that because that Donald Cerrone fight was whack, and I love Connor. I was excited for that fight, and that was nice, boy Connor. <laughs> hey, but but Tony not gonna go out the way. Uh, Tony not gonna go out the way Donald oh, did. But this Connor might put him out the way. But, but yeah. at least it it won't be shoulder strikes. You know what I mean? Like like yeah. he gotta get it's not ridiculous like that. Yeah, he von, von flicks. Yeah. <laughs> he twists. Yeah. I mean, you know? hit you with this uh, Ez- Ezekiel choke. Yeah, I mean, he hit you with the shoulder lean. You know what I mean? Like so, well, Connor needs to win. And, like if he come back and he loses to Michael Chandler, it's a wrap. It. It's a wrap. Like that's a you, you can't go come Jake Paul. <laughs> exactly, exactly. Like you can't come back and fight him and, and 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 lose because then it's like there's nobody for you in the top five. Like Chandler's five. There's nobody if you can't beat number five. Then you can't hang. Yeah, but, like. But but it's okay if you don't win the title again, right? Because you think about like Nate Diaz hasn't been in title contention. Right. Does anyone have an abacus like for years, right? Um, but he can do fan friendly fights. But the thing is, to put Connor in there, I think the lowest person you can put him in there with is a Tony Ferguson just because people love Tony. 
Yeah. Mm -hmm. Just like people loved Cowboy. Um, do I think is do I think Tanner goes in there with Islam? Absolutely not. He's gonna no. get fucking mauled. You know yeah. what I mean? It won't end well. No. All right. So, last question of the night. I got a good one. What was, what has been? Obviously, now that we have closed the chapter on the Figueroa, Figueroa, sorry, and Moreno chapter. What's been the best rivalry in the UFC ever? Just the best rivalry that just had you so fired up. Whether it was a combination of in ring, out ring, all of it. What was just your favorite rivalry so far? I can answer mine. DC John Jones. <laughs> DC John Jones. I was gonna say Connor versus Nate Diaz, because I, it, but it was almost for like the same exact reason, right? Mm -hmm. <laughs> Except. You, you, well, most I would say the casuals or however you want to call it would have said that Conor McGregor is just going to run through Nate Diaz, and that's what made it even more beautiful to me to start that rivalry. Yeah, that that rivalry, it like made history. And our surprise, motherfuckers. <laughs> and arguably everything about it, everything about it was like. It was a fucking moment in time that... And I felt like Diaz won the second fight. We should do a watch party where we get on here and we all watch the second fight. Because I felt like Diaz won. Um, so before I tell you my pick, Sky, are, 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 are you still there, pussy? <laughs> I'm still here, John. I was going to say that. I was just going to say, you still yeah, there, pussy? I'm still here. Uh, as well as easy as it is to go DC John Jones, <clears throat> um, it's hard because I think about DC John Jones. Um, I think about Rampage and Rashad, um, but I think for me, what might take the bacon of all of that is probably going to be uh, Tito and Chuck. You know, yes, it was the earlier days in the UFC, but the thing that makes this so captivating that these dudes were fucking homies. Like they were, they were ride to die together. You know what I'm saying? Like, and then they did the Ultimate Fighter, and you hear all this shit comes out about it. And then ultimately, like, you know, the in ring wasn't as good as the out of ring. Um, actually, wait, pause. No, I, I take that back. Uh, I'm going to go with Anderson Silva and Uncle Chael. That's what I'm going to go with. Anderson yeah. Silva, Uncle Chael, because that was unreal, especially when you put in the fact what happened in ring. That was the first time we ever seen Anderson Silva get dominated, right? Yes. And then in the second yeah. fight, and then the second, I mean, then he throws up a triangle out of fucking nowhere. <laughs> the bar loses its mind. And then in the second fight that people never talk about was Anderson Silva hit Chael with an illegal fucking knee to the face before he finished him. See, you see how Jay says this? He, oh, pick one, pick one. Then he picks five. <laughs> hey, he's been watching DC. If you watch any show that DC's on, DC oh, is yeah. always cheating. DC cheated. is always cheating. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, like he was like, no, pick one. Yeah, like he did uh, for the crowds. Pick one, pick one. I was like, well, you know. <laughs> I'm gonna, I'm gonna, my final answer, I'm going with uh, Anderson Silva and Chael Sonnen. Done. Finish. I, uh, you brought me back with the rampage, though, and he was like, "It's gonna be some black on black crime." <laughs> <laughs> Listen, I don't know if you've ever seen it before. Uh, did you watch your season of The Ultimate Fighter? Yeah, because yeah. there's this moment where they come face to face, and it's the coldest shit. When Rashad hits him with the shoulder chop, you know, and then your boy Rampage is like, "Why you come at my face?" He goes, "Cause I wanted to," you know. Yeah. In his face, make it, let it happen. <laughs> let it, like, 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 like he slows down, like his tone and his. Let it happen, nigga. I was just like, <laughs> how did you not swing? At that moment, I lost all respect for Rampage Jackson. Uh, speaking of Rampage, uh, him and Tito Ortiz have a new so uh, new league coming out, United sure. Fighter League. Um, I just seen it pop up on my Instagram. I gave them a follow. They're going to have their first fight February 18th in Mesa, pretty much Phoenix, Arizona. Um, so I'm really interested in that. I'm actually going to make a, a content video on that because, you know. They fight each other or they just no, have, they have, no, they have, they have a league. Like the organization. Like yeah, they're going to be um, pr pretty much like spinning off 
from what I've seen, spinning off the fact of like some of the things that the UFC doesn't have. So they have like sponsorships, health insurance, and oh, um, health and, insurance. <laughs> Yeah, yeah. yeah. healthy yeah. sure. Come, come yeah. fight over here, and you good. <laughs> yeah, come to death row. <laughs> <laughs> Shout out to Shug. Hey. Shout yeah. out to Shug. Yeah, but you know we will be back next week. We're out of here for the day. Hopefully, you guys are enjoying the fights. Hopefully, you guys check out one. They're having a fight this weekend, but aside from that, it's gonna be a cool night for Bellator and UFC. But we'll still be back. Maybe we'll do a watch party watching some old fights. Two times. times. Brandon Moreno. (laughs) You know. uh, And, uh, yeah, so next week we'll hop back on here. And maybe maybe next week we'll tackle what the best weight class is. Because this seems to be a hot topic. And, uh, yeah. But anyways, peace. We out. We out.